Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody. Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas where this time we're going to be going over 100 tips and tricks for Fallout New Vegas for anybody returning to the Wasteland or for anybody going on their first Wasteland adventure. Anyway, let's begin with our very first tip which is never put 10 in any special stat at the very start of the game. The main reason why you don't want to do this is because you can put 9 into this and you can get implants later as well as certain perks and certain bonuses throughout the game actually give you pluses to your special points. So if you want to take intense training, that will get you plus one to any of your special stats that you would like, as well as the implants will also give you plus one to any of your special stats, so long as you can afford those implants and you have enough endurance to use those implants. Going with 10 out the gate doesn't really give you any major advantage compared to just going with nine right out of the gate for any sort of skill. Tip number two, strength is also tied to which weapons you can use effectively. Whenever you look at a weapon, doesn't matter what type of weapon it is, there's always a strength requirement for that weapon. In order for you to meet that strength requirement and for you to use the weapon most effectively, you need to have that much strength. Usually these are generally at six or seven at the highest for any particular weapon. And sometimes this is more impactful because the amount of strength you have and the amount of weapon skill you have determines how much sway the weapon actually has. So meeting that strength requirement is very important so that you don't have a ton of sway with those weapons. Tip number three, endurance is also tied to how many implants you can have. The more endurance you have, the more implants you can get. But once again, you don't need to go anywhere above nine endurance. Starting out with nine endurance lets you get the endurance implant, which takes it up to 10, and then you can buy all other implants that you would like at the New Vegas Clinic. Tip number four, intelligence is tied to the amount of skill points that you get per level. For every point of intelligence you get, you get half a point more, plus the initial base 10 that you always have. So if you have 10 intelligence, then that means every level you're going to get 15 intelligence points. If you have one intelligence, that means you're going to get 10 and a half points, which is rounded for every level. So you'll start out with 11, then 10, then 11, and so forth as you level up. Number five, get the most out of the skilled trait. Skilled is an insanely strong trait that gives you plus five to every single skill that you have. It also comes with the debuff of you getting minus 10% XP, which basically never matters in Fallout New Vegas. If you plan on playing through everything in Fallout New Vegas, you will hit the maximum level cap. On top of that, you can also get a bonus when you leave Good Springs from taking skilled at the very start, saying to rebuild your character and picking skilled again, and you'll get the bonus of an extra five points to everything. You can do this one more time at the end of Old World Blues as well with the auto dock where you can get another five points, assuming you've got everything for the auto dock where you can do that. The downside doesn't come with it though. It's always 10% minus to your XP, no matter how many times you take this. Number six, over leveling in Good Springs. If you can over level in Good Springs, this can be very useful once you go to leave Good Springs because you can once again get the skill trait. And coming in at number seven to go along with six is the Sierra Madre perks are bugged. Any of the level two perks that are available in Sierra Madre, which is four of them, you can take any one of them at level 2 and at level 4 and leave Good Springs and keep those even if you choose to rebuild your character. If you pick any other perks beyond those four ones being In Shining Armor, Junk Rounds, Old World Gourmet, Light Touch, then those perks will be refunded. Any of those four will not though. Coming in at number 8, 223 and 38 Special. 223 and 38 Special are kind of weird ammo types that you can buy from vendors and they don't go to a particular gun because no gun in Fallout New Vegas actually shoots 38 Special or 223. However, you can load both of them into certain weapons that take different ammo types. For 38 Special, you can load this into any weapon that shoots 357 and for 223, you can load this into any 556 gun. This is more akin to how real life ammunitions can work where you can load 38 special into 357, at least revolvers, not into every 357 gun. And you can also load 223 rounds into weapons that fire the 556. Tip number nine, looting Doc Mitchell's house. Be sure to loot Doc Mitchell's house at the very start of any Fallout New Vegas playthrough so that you can earn extra money and just so that you can carry on the tradition of stealing everything from the person who saved you. Tip number 10, steal things early on. This can get you a huge advantage in Good Springs. There's plenty of houses to loot and plenty of good gear that you can find inside of them, including ammo, meds, and also a few skill books. Number 11, reverse pickpocketing. The way reverse pickpocketing works is whenever you pickpocket somebody and put a weapon inside or an armor inside of their inventory, and then leave the area. Once you come back, they will probably be holding that weapon or they will be wearing that armor and they will have taken off their armor or, or have taken off their weapon and put it in their inventory, which you can steal. This can be very useful for stealing some of the rare items that people have on them that are one of a kind. Tip number 12, be sure to make your own ammo. This can be very good at the very start of New Vegas as it allows you to have different ammunition types that you can load up and different ammunition types can get different benefits. Specifically early on, I like to scrap the 20 gauge shells that you get and then turn them into 20 gauge magnum rounds so they do a little bit more damage. Tip number 13, you only need seven strength in total. 
regardless of what build you're running, assuming that you have the Old World Blues DLC. Because in Old World Blues, you can get the Reinforced Spine, which gives you plus two strength, and you can also get the Implant, which gives you plus one strength, taking it up to plus ten strength, which will be the max that any build can make use of. Number 14. Good Nature gives you a huge bonus at the very start of the game. This is another trait that you can take early on, and what Good Nature does is give you plus five to more of your passive or utility-based skills, and then minus five from all of your combat skills. Which might sound like a bad thing, but if you're only planning on using one particular weapon type, whether that be guns, melee weapons, explosives, whatever it might be, you're probably not really caring about putting a whole lot of points into the rest of your stats. So that can be really useful early on if you would like to have higher lock picking, higher science, or higher repair, all of which being very useful skills for almost any build. Tip number 15, be sure to get well rested. Well rested is a status effect that you can gain whenever you sleep in an owned bed of yours, or a hotel's bed, whatever sort of rented bed that you might have, for 8 hours or more, this will give you a 10% bonus XP boost for the next couple of hours. Tip number 16, reload speed is based off of your agility. The higher agility you have, the faster you'll reload stuff. The lower your agility is, the slower you're going to reload. So be sure to have high agility if you have weapons that take a long time, assuming you don't want to swap out weapons. Tip number 17, be sure to use the Mojave Express. You can find Mojave Express bins around the wasteland, and with these you can put in items and send them anywhere else in the Mojave so long as there is another Mojave Express box there, which can be very useful. Tip number 18, vendors reset every three days. If you're looking for a particular item that the vendor might have, be sure to wait three days, come back, and you might be able to get it. This can be very useful if you're fishing for mods early on, or if you're just trying to grab extra ammo or extra medical supplies, whatever it might be, from the particular vendor. Number 19, vendors have tiered loot. Depending on which vendor you're talking to, they might have certain better or worse mods for weapons. This is where the tiers mostly come into play, because if a vendor doesn't carry high-level tier mods, and there's no point in trying to reset them. Vice versa, too, if they only carry high-level mods or mods for weapons that you're not using, it's also not going to help to reset them. Tip number 20, be sure to use the vats to scout out ahead. This can be very useful for finding threats in the distance or for just seeing what weapons enemies may or may not have. Tip number 21, be sure to talk to everybody in Fallout. Who knows how many people actually have quests and be sure to pay attention to what they're saying because various quests in Fallout New Vegas are actually completely unmarked. Tip number 22, when hacking a computer, you can also find these sections which can potentially get you a reset of all of your tries. So be sure to use up all three of your tries before you go to the fourth try, and then go through all of these. They can also remove duds, which makes it so you can take away even more password options in this. Not every computer will always reset, but that's where tip 23 comes in of how to reset a computer. You never actually have to be locked out of a computer. Just try your three best guesses, and if you don't think that you're anywhere close to what it is, and there's still a ton of options, simply click out of the computer, and then go right back into it and it will refresh and allow you to use your three tries once again and you can do this an infinite amount of times. Tip number 24, different clothings may belong to different factions, which makes it so certain other factions might attack you on site. It's also really good if you would like to be, let's say, idolized by multiple sides, but you're going to need to kill a couple people on their side to get idolized by the other side. Wearing their armor or wearing the armor of their enemy might be a really good way of doing this. Tip number 25, you have a Pip-Boy light. In order to activate this, just hold in your Pip-Boy button, whatever that is for your inventory. Tip number 26, make use of your fast travel. You can fast travel anywhere that you've already been in New Vegas, making it very easy to set up potential loot spots to where you can put all of your gear that you have, especially if you're getting a little bit too much overweight or you need to go back and sell some of your stuff. Tip number 27, be sure to always search around houses. Every nook and cranny of a house may have something in it. Certain houses have a lot of hidden gear inside of them, hidden behind beds, behind bookcases, inside of toilets, wherever it might be. If you think that somebody could hide something there, there's a good chance that there might be something hidden there. Tip number 28, collecting skill books. There are skill books that you can find all throughout the Mojave and in the various DLCs. These give you three points to whichever skill that they belong to, or a fourth point if you have the comprehension perk, which can be very useful. Tip number 29, be sure to use chems and magazines to get through skill checks. This can be very useful for lock picking, for repairing stuff, for really anything in the game because you can find magazines that will give you a plus 10 to any sort of your skill for a limited amount of time, or once again, if you have the comprehension perk, it jumps it up to plus 20, which can be very, very useful. Chems can be in a similar situation. Something like Mentats also buffs your special stats, and when you buff up your special stats, they always coincide with some of your skills. Tip number 30, 
The Lonesome Road is the only DLC that you can come back and forth from whenever you'd like, so going there early on can be very useful for getting a lot of really good gear, especially if you pick up some nail guns, which are worth a lot of cash in the wasteland. Tip number 31, luck is tied to gambling and crit chance. The higher luck you have, the higher chance you have of winning at any sort of gambling game, no matter what it is. And this can be pretty strong when you have 10 luck and you can gamble uh, just double down on every single hand of blackjack. It's also tied to your crit chance. Every one luck gives you 1% more crit chance, not always affected by perks that also give you crit chance. So the higher the luck, the higher percent chance you have of critting, which can be very useful on basically any build besides explosive weapons. Tip number 31, never sell the Sunset Sarsaparilla. The main reason is that you can get Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps from this, which can be very useful for a particular quest. You can also use these as very good healing items in the early game where you're not wasting your stim packs, whether you're playing on the hardcore difficulty or not. Tip number 33, how to find the blue stars. Blue stars are found all across the wasteland. Some of these you can buy, some of these you can trade, some of these you can earn. You can also get these from the Sunset Sarsaparilla bottles, but a lot of them you can just find laying around in houses next to Sunset Sarsaparilla bottles. So if you see a bunch of bottles laying somewhere, there's probably a star cap next to them. Tip number 34, temporary buffs do not count towards perks. So if you were to take something like buff out and buff your strength up, you're not actually getting that strength in order to get that to a, a perk that you need. Same thing can kind of go with some traits as well, like four eyes giving you minus one to your perception, but giving you plus two perception when you have glasses on. You don't have those plus two perception when it comes to picking perks, but you have that minus one when it does come to picking perks. Tip number 35, be on the lookout for snow globes around the Mojave. There is only a couple of these that you can find, but all of them are worth a lot of extra money. Assuming you didn't kill Mr. House, because you do still need him alive in order to get this money. Tip number 36, be sure to recycle your energy cells. This is very important for an energy weapon build. You can do this at any sort of workbench, and just be sure that you're recycling your cells often, that way you're not running yourself out of ammo. Tip number 37, if your weapon is reloading extremely slow, something like the 357, you can swap this out to a different weapon and then switch back and your gun will be fully reloaded. Tip number 38, replacing your traits in Old World Blues. I kind of talked about this earlier, but if you pick two traits that are very strong in the early game of Fallout New Vegas and then you go and do Old World Blues, you can talk to the auto dock and trade out both of those traits for something else, which can be very useful too. Tip number 39, be sure to gamble at the casinos early on to get early money. You can get a couple of items that give you bonus luck. We'll talk about those in a second, but if you already have high natural luck, gambling at the casinos is a fantastic way to make early money and being able to afford things like medical implants and very strong weapons as well as everything else that you would want to buy in New Vegas. Tip number 40, getting the Naughty Nightwear. You can get the Naughty Nightwear at Mick and Ralph's. You can buy this for very cheap, and this is one of the few items that actually gives you plus one luck, which is fantastic for gambling at the casinos. Be sure to grab this early on because it's also very useful just for the charisma and speech bonus too that it gives. Tip number 41, getting this machine early on. This machine is a fantastic weapon that you can only get from an unmarked quest. In order to do this, you do have to go to Camp McCarran, and then you can either side with Contreras or sign against him. Signing against him is much easier and faster. All you have to do is hack into his terminal and then rat him out. Once you do that, you are rewarded this machine, which is a 308 rifle that is very similar to the battle rifle added with the Gunner's Arsenal DLC. It is very strong and extremely hard to break. Tip number 42, getting Chance's knife early on. In order to do this, you do need a shovel and you do need to go find Chance's grave. This is just north of Good Springs where there is some Cazadors, which are very scary, but so long as you can avoid them, you can dig up Chance's grave and get his knife, which is an insanely strong early game melee weapon and kind of remains a very strong weapon throughout the entirety of New Vegas. Tip number 43, getting a free service rifle. You can do this at the trading post to the south. All you have to do is find Ranger Jackson, go and do his quest, and he will give you this, some armor piercing rounds, and some food, which can be very useful. Tip number 44, getting lucky early on. Lucky is another very strong weapon. This is the unique 357 revolver that's in the Steve Bison Hotel. In order to get this, you do need to have 75 lock picking, but you can cheat that out thanks to chems and magazines. So just having enough lock picking in order to get this can make a world of difference at the start of New Vegas. Number 45, getting the Rat Slayer early on. We're going through all the weapons here. The Rat Slayer is probably one of my personal favorite weapons. In order to get this, you have to go into Brock Flower Cave, which is infested with giant rats that actually are fairly scary, especially in the early game. However, if you have a stealth boy, you can easily run past these rats grab the Rat Slayer, and then just book it straight out of there. The Rat Slayer is the unique varmint rifle that has all of the attachments already on it, so it's got an extended magazine, suppressor, and a scope, 
and it is a fantastic early game sniper weapon, even working pretty well up to the mid and even late game to some extent. Number 46, be sure to loot the Lucky 38 early on. Whenever you get to New Vegas, you can immediately go into the Lucky 38, and you can loot everything that's in there. There is a lot of stuff in there, including various booze that you can sell to just about anybody for a decent profit, pre-war money, which is worth a lot, chems, which are also worth a decent amount, and there's also a couple of other hidden items like a snow globe in there, which is worth a lot of money. Tip number 47, you can get free magazines from the strip. All you have to do is find these mailboxes, open them up, and they will give you some sort of random magazine that correlates with a skill. Tip number 48, picking up items to steal. In order to pick up items in this game, at least if you're on keyboard, be sure to push Z. This will allow you to pick up an item or a body or anything else, take it out of the line of sight of somebody or put something in their line of sight, and then you can loot everything that you would like. Tip number 49, if you want to get Day Tripper really easy, be sure to take Logan's Loophole as one of your traits. This will make it so your level cap is at level 30, but you can always reset that at Old World Blues if you would choose to. And then you can take all the chems that you would like and get Day Tripper really easy, which can be a very useful extra perk to have. Tip number 50, you can also get Day Tripper off of booze. So you can just drink all the booze that you can find and you'll get Day Tripper pretty quick. Tip number 51, find recipes around the wasteland. Sometimes you can find these in various places like the Powder Ganger's Prison, and once you find these, they will unlock a recipe for you to make at any sort of workbench. There's also a couple of these that are rewarded from passing skill checks. Tip number 52, make use of the Handloader and Vigilant Recycler perks. These two are really useful for both guns and energy weapons. Energy weapons gives you more optimized cells, which can be very useful, and hand loader can give you different types of ammunition unique to various types of ammo. These can be extremely strong for things like the 357 or the 308. Tip number 53, Mad Bomber. If you're going with an explosives build or just an explosives adjacent build, be sure to take Mad Bomber. It is a very fun and very useful perk for explosive builds, especially into the early and mid game where it's difficult to find explosives. This will let you make new explosives, and some of them are very strong. Tip number 54, the Great Khan Armory. The Great Khan Armory generally sells every type of ammo in the game, which can be very useful for finding rare types of ammo or somewhat rare types of ammo that other vendors may not sell. In order to get this, you just have to get in good with the Great Khans. You can do this pretty easy with Boulder City, and that will sell you a lot of really cool gear. Tip number five, get that gun for free. In order to get this, you just have to go to the Dinosaur in Novak, open up the back room, and then steal that gun. You could also, of course, buy this, but if you just want it for free, you can always steal it. Tip number 56, getting a Ranger Sequoia for free. You can get this from completing the quest Return to Sender. Although this is going to be a stolen Ranger Sequoia, but it's still a free Ranger Sequoia that you can get. Tip number 57, be sure to craft weapon repair kits. In order to do this, you only need a couple of random supplies and you can make these at any sort of workbench. Weapon repair kits will repair whatever weapon that you're holding in your hand. This can be very useful for very rare weapons that you may not have other copies of them for or certain unique weapons that you can only repair with weapon repair kits. Tip number 54, treat chems like money. Chems don't weigh anything and they're worth a lot of money, so be sure to hoard them as much as possible because you can always sell them for extra cash if you don't intend on using them. Tip number 59, be sure to always check what you can craft. This works for workbenches, reloading benches, or campfires because you never know what you can craft from there from the stuff that you have. This can be especially useful on a survival difficulty where you are going to need to manage your food, sleep, and water. Tip number 60. If you want to have a really strong early game, be sure to grab Chance's Knife and grab the Grunt and Cowboy perk as both of these add more damage to it, making it an insanely strong early game melee weapon. It also makes quite a few other weapons very strong too, and especially into the late game. Tip number 61. Be sure to keep different ammos for the weapons that you're using frequently. This can range from hollow point rounds to explosive rounds to optimized energy cells, whatever it might be. That way you can switch these in and out whenever you feel like the situation arises. So if you get up against enemies with really hard armor, throw in some armor piercing rounds. You're fighting fast moving non-armored enemies, throw in some hollow point rounds. Tip number 62, the weathered 10 millimeter pistol is one of the few unique weapons that can actually take mods. It can take any mod that the 10 millimeter pistol can have, so you can attach the increased magazine, the laser sight, and the suppressor onto this if you would like to. Tip number 63, be sure to check out for challenges and weapons. Challenges are a great way to get either extra early game perks, which can be very useful, or they can be a great way to, for getting extra XP so that you can level up a little bit faster. Checking these often will make it a little bit easier for you to plan out what you're going to use against certain enemy types. Tip number 64, Day Tripper, Chemist, and Stealth Girl all work on Stealth Boys, so you can actually extend the life of Stealth Boys immensely with these three perks. Tip number 65, Chemist also works on the GRX Implant, which the GRX Implant is probably one of the strongest perks in the game. 
Chemist is also probably one of the strongest perks in the game, and this will just increase the duration that you can use this, which is pretty crazy. Tip number 66, be sure to use Wild Wasteland if you'd like to get the Alien Blaster. This does replace the unique Gauss Rifle, so you are trading that off, but once you go to the location, you can fight the aliens, take the Alien Blaster, and use that to your heart's content, or until you run out of ammo. Tip number 67, Wild Wasteland is also tied to the Holy Hand Grenades. You can get three of these inside of a church in Camp Searchlight, and these basically work as Fat Man nukes, which is really, really cool. I like that. They're very fun to use. Tip number 68, Blackjack will generally make you the most amount of money at casinos. Now, you can technically make more money from Roulette, but you do have to get more lucky, and luck plays less of a factor into it. Blackjack is generally going to get you more money, and slot machines are generally going to get you the least amount of money quickly. Tip number 69, be sure to keep your weapons in good condition. If your weapons aren't in good condition, they can jam, and that can be really bad, especially where in Fallout New Vegas you have to go completely through an action before you can get into your inventory. So if you're currently getting shot, stabbed, or blown up, taking three or four extra seconds to fiddle around with your gun is never going to feel good in the middle of a fight. Tip number 70, be sure to take turbo when running to the boomers. You don't actually have to have any strategy when running to the boomers, you just need enough chems to do it. Take two or three hits of turbo and you should make it there with no trouble. Tip number 71, enemies scale based off of your level, usually with the gear that they have as well as how tanky they are. So the further along you are into the game, the stronger the enemies are going to be and the better gear that they have, which means the more money that you can get or the more weapons you can take and repair with your own weapons. Tip number 72, only Gunrunner Arsenal weapons can have Gunrunner Arsenal mods. So if you find a suppressor that says Gunrunner Arsenal only, you do have to have a Gunrunner's Arsenal weapon to attach it to and not just the base weapon of it. Tip number 73, be sure to quick save often. This is for various reasons. You might die in the wasteland and Fallout New Vegas is not known for being the most well optimized and may crash. So always quick save. Tip number 74, there are unique melee attacks in the vats for melee weapons. Be sure to check these out. They can be really strong, especially some of them that just knock down enemies because if the enemy is knocked down, it's not fighting you and you can wail on it even more with your super sledge or whatever weapon you're using. Tip number 75, landmines are free money. This is kind of similar to chems. Landmines and explosives generally don't weigh that much, but they do sell for a lot. Now, landmines can be a little bit dangerous, but if you pick them up fast enough, then you can get some extra money from them. Tip number 76, the Euclid Seafinder. I hope I'm saying that name right, because it always looks weird to me. In order to get this and get it to work, you have to buy it in Freeside, and then you have to go to Helios 1 and divert all of the energy to that weapon. You can use this weapon once a day, and it fires down a space laser, which is pretty awesome, but very impractical for basically any situation. Tip number 77, In Shining Armor is a bugged perk that does nothing. Don't ever take it. Tip number 78, The Professional is also a bugged perk that actually gets you more stats than what it shows, because this is supposed to work for handguns, but it actually works for all weapons. So get more damage if you want to take The Professional. Tip number 78, Certified Tech is also bugged and doesn't give you extra damage towards robots. However, it does get you more electronics from robots, so it's not nearly as useful as it looks on paper. Tip number 80, Lead Belly is basically a useless perk. It does very little in the base game, and it does even less with Old World Blues, since you can get a implant that basically just gives you Lead Belly for free, or you have to pay for it, which is still not that big of a deal. Tip number 81, there is a challenge in this game that's called Meat of Kings. In order to get this, you do need to have the Cannibal perk, and you need to eat every major faction leader, but it will give you some unique bonuses. Tip number 82, there are unique unarmed attacks that you can learn as well. You can learn one of these from Veronica, you can learn one of these from Ranger Andy, one of these from Caesar's Legion, and one of these from the Great Cons. Tip number 83, the perk Atomic can actually be triggered with foods, or anything that gives you radiation for that matter. Tip number 84, Animal Friend actually works on the Night Stalkers as well, which is kind of weird because they are counted as abominations, but for whatever reason, it also counts them as an animal. Tip number 85, the Sierra Madre Casino pays more than any other casino, because this doesn't pay you a direct one-to-one -one transfer of chips to caps, this gives you actually a one-to-one -one ratio of pre-war money, which is worth way more. So you can get a whole lot more money whenever you're gambling at the Sierra Madre Casino. Tip number 86, Rapid Reload is also bugged as a perk. This is supposed to give you a faster reload speed, which it does. However, if you load the game up, whatever weapon that you have out, this actually gives you a reduction in reload speed based on how much it's supposed to give you. So switching out a weapon and then switching it back on will reset this, but it is something to kind of remember when frequently reloading saves. Tip number 87, you can steal all the gold bars in the Sierra Madre. This can be kind of difficult to do. It's far easier if you have the implant GRX, but you can get out of the Sierra Madre casino with all of the gold. 
Of course, if you're on PC, you could also just no clip out of there if you would like to. That's also an option. Tip number 88. Never take the traits Fast Shot and Trigger Discipline together because both of these are supposed to give you either 20% more accuracy for exchange for 20% rate of fire or 20% more rate of fire for less accuracy. If you take both of these, you actually end up with a negative because this is 20% and then it is also being increased by 20% which is not a direct additive. These are multiples of one another. So you're getting a negative if you pick both of these. Tip number 89, you can actually get infinite coins in the Sierra Madre or after you've completed the Sierra Madre, so long as you're willing to wait the time for the Sierra Madre coins to be available for you to get once again, or if you get the supplies and the recipe to make more Sierra Madre coins. Tip number 90, you can actually sneak in Rar's Fist into the Sierra Madre DLC. The main reason why is because this counts as a quest item, so long as you don't make it into Fist of the North Rar or the Fist of Rar, whichever one you want to make or whichever one you have traits for. But then once you're in Sierra Madre, you can go to the first workbench and then turn it into that because again, this counts as a quest item and an item that can't be taken away from you. Tip number 91, the Bear Trap Fist is also OP in the Sierra Madre. The main reason why is that it has the highest dismember chance out of any of the weapons that you can get there and it just tears the ghost people apart even in a non-unarmed build. I would highly recommend that you use that. Tip number 92, you can actually find random skill books in the Honest Heart DLC. These are in four specific caves and they can just be appearing inside of boxes. These boxes are determined as soon as you enter the cave so you can actually save outside the cave and keep entering in and keep checking these boxes to get a couple of extra skill books early on. Tip number 93, you can actually cheat out the dead man's hand achievement in the Sierra Madre. In order to do this, you just need to find one part of the dead man's hand in the Sierra Madre and just keep dropping it and picking it back up until you've gotten the achievement once you have all five of these cards. Tip number 94, there is a unique fire axe called Knock Knock, which is kind of hidden in Camp Searchlight. In order to get this, you need to talk to the raiders there. Then they will send you on a mission to get some radiation suits, come back with them. You have to escort them through the police station and then in the fire station in a bathroom stall, you can find Knock Knock. Tip number 95, if you're playing on the hardcore difficulty, be sure to hoard Hydra. This is an extremely useful chem for you to have since you can rebuild your limbs with it, which is going to be a major factor when playing on the hardcore difficulty. Tip number 96, jury rigging basically makes you rich. If you get the perk jury rigging, you can fix things with roughly other things that are close to it. So if you find something like a 50 cal laying on the ground that's almost broken, you can fix it with, say, a varmint rifle and then sell said 50 cal for a huge profit. Tip number 97, be sure to grab the Q35 early on. This is probably one of the best early game energy weapons and you don't actually need any sort of investment to get this. If you'd like to speed it up, you can take lock picking or science in order to get it, but you could also just talk to the robots there and go on the tour. Tip number 98, Logan's loophole can be re-rolled at Old World Blues. This can be very useful if you want to go above that level 30 cap and you want to have that really good early game usefulness of never being addicted to anything. Tip number 99, you never need to go above five perception. Five perception is the max that you need since you get plus one from the implant, which will get you up to six. And six is about the highest that you need for any useful perk. Most perks in perception are not very useful and perception doesn't actually give you any sort of bonus during a combat sequence other than being able to see enemies further away on your compass. And then tip number 100, special stats all have something else that they cover. For something like Endurance, this also covers your health. For Strength, this covers how much melee damage you do and how much you can carry. Perception, this is how far away you can see stuff on your compass. Agility, this is reload speed. Intelligence is skill points. And Luck is things like crit chance and just getting lucky at casinos. And Charisma also affects your companions, which can be very useful. So just keep in mind that no matter what special setup you had, there's always going to be hidden bonuses that you also get, whether you picked really high amounts of points or very low amounts of points. And this has been 100 Tips and Tricks in Fallout New Vegas. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This took me a long time to put together. Thank you guys so very much for watching it. If you guys did enjoy it, tell me in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody.